You don't always have to have the most expensive tool to make it work. When I was a mechanic, I'd have craftsman tools. Cause that's all I could afford, you know, and they're, oh, well, you got to get a snap on this. And don't get me wrong, you know, some of the tools, they make it a little bit easier. But if I can't do it with this tool, then am I really a mechanic? My name is Nathaniel, and this is the Motorcycle Archives. Episode three, Robert Martinez. My dad always liked getting away from the valley. And, you know, this is not one of those bikes that he just cruised around on. I mean, you know, he, he definitely put miles on it and he, he put it through its paces. So, yeah. you know, he left me with a, a good amount of work to do. <laughs> as much as I want to go through and powder coat it and mold the frame and, you know, re-chrome everything, it'll probably be a budget build just like it was with him. The majority will go into the heart and just get it all 100% so I could keep it on the road, you know, not have to worry about <laughs> getting trucked home. I always tell, you know, like my kids, sometimes I'm like, hey, I could have a nice this or a nice that, but you know, we went here this summer, we did that during the winter, you know, you got to find that balance. I just realized there's, you know, so many that I'm going to have to drill out and that's kind of where I decided it's going to have to come apart, but it doesn't always work out the way you want it. And for whatever reason, I can't ask him now, but that's the way, way he left it. You know, I could have stayed working at the dealer and done stuff, you know, on the side, but I realized I wasn't 100% in it. And naturally, I, I like to just work on stuff. So being like a building mechanic or technician, it just kind of fell in with me and I just kept on that route. I truly believe that people that are out there building stuff and you know, that brings a lot of value. Yeah, you know, working with your hands. In a lot of those fields, they've gone up because everybody wanted to be behind a desk and everybody wanted to be working from home. And it's like, that's cool, but it's fun if you can have a little bit of, of both worlds. Can you talk a little bit about just like the philosophy of working on the motorcycles and kind of what that means to you to get your hands in there? Especially on like the older ones, you know, I could just do it and not really think about it. I'm going with the motion, like to me that's my comfort zone. Even if I don't know 100% on certain things, as I'm going, I'm learning it, you know, or I'm revisiting it. Some people look at it and they're just like, I don't want to deal with it, you know, I, I want somebody else to deal with it. But for me, it's like, I, I want to know it, you know, I want to be a part of it. The more you can kind of do, the more pride you take in it. But also like, you know, I like the older bikes. I like them all. And I think that's why I probably don't have a shop because I, you know, end up liking everything that I built that I wouldn't be able to get rid of it. You know, I'd be a hoarder, bike hoarder. Yeah, there you see, that's, yeah. that's how it works. Yeah. It's like, you, yeah. you don't like this hoarding, but hey, I could be a hoarder for this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he was very uh, well-rounded. Could be the tough guy and then he could be the, you know, caring dad and, you know, take care of his family and, and, and still have fun, you know. Arthur, but everybody called him Art Martinez. We always called him Road Vulture because being a truck driver, that was a CB handle, Road Vulture. He taught me enough that when I screwed up, I needed to figure out how to make it right. You know, whether it was personal stuff or mechanical stuff, don't try and get away from it. You know, if, if you got to fix it, fix it. He always had a lot of good knowledge to give. And when you have stuff like that to kind of keep going, it's kind of makes you wonder when you sit back, you're like, oh man, what if I didn't have that? Watch out, you're Balboa, man. Oh, uh oh, are they out? Busting windows. On Balboa? From Roscoe to here, there's like room 10 bars. Oh, they got your van? Yeah, this, one, this window right here. Oh, shit. Window, they busted this one. You got to go back and move it up. Damn. Park this one inside tonight, I got no they take anything or just what bust it? Take? Yeah, I think the one that happened over there, I said, man, it just, it doesn't look like anybody went in. They just you, busted the door it. The glass falls, it was just a hole right here. Yeah. So they just said, bah. And then Fun. there was a joint on the floor, like a roach with blood on it. Oh, man. So they must have been, bob, just go around, just smoking a joint. That's so what I told my wife. I said, maybe somebody was just on one and they were they just, were you know, testing yeah, out their movie skills. Yeah, that's Shit. exactly fucking what they did. Because you see a joint right there on the floor with blood all over it. Like, you know, I mean, I'm not a detective, but. Uh, I have to go check and keep an eye on my shit tonight, I guess. Uh, looks like kidding. Looks like the neighborhood's picking back up again. Even my wife, she'll, if she sees somebody like parked or somebody we don't know or she hasn't seen and they look suspicious though she'll you know take a picture get the license plate he when he got his his uh truck i didn't know it was his and i was eye fucking because i was like this guy's coming by a few times slow and he rolls it down and he's like 
everything good? And I was like, oh, I didn't know it was you, you know? I said, I thought it was somebody casing this shit out. And then sometimes I got to remember, oh, they're looking at the bike, you know, whatever, you know. But how are they looking at the bike? Shit, I don't need to go to prison for somebody trying to steal my shit, but I will. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I'm sure it means a lot to like be able to take in your dad's old bike that has, you know, he's had so many memories on it. What's your goal for it for the future? To go spread his ashes, uh, that was one of the things that I wanted it up and running for. That's why I kind of, you know, right now I'm like, I'm just going to go budget wise, you know, make sure the motor and transmission, everything's sound on it. Not worry too much about the paint, you know, and stuff like that. He always taught me like, oh, you know, just have fun. There's no point in making it like, oh, you got to be flashy, you got to be rich about it, or, you know, you have to be the number one, like, just have fun with it, you know? I've been riding so long, too, where it feels like it's normal for me, I feel comfortable, but it just forces you to be in the moment, and I think that's so special about it. Yeah, and, you know, it's like you got to prepare, you know, when you're in a car, you close yourself in, and then you have buttons to give you air or heat, whereas, you know, when you ride, if it's hot that day, you're going to be hot. You know, you gotta plan for it. If it's cold, you gotta plan for it. If it's raining, you gotta plan for it, you know? Riding through all of it, you kinda, you know, you learn. But yeah, you definitely have to be more aware and, and you are more aware, you know? I don't know, that's part of the fun of these though, is the struggle. Yeah, there's always a little bit of struggle, but it's out. Yeah, it's out. But, this doesn't seem okay. Mm -hmm. It's a little crusty, but it's all good. Yeah, you know, I mean, I'll, you know, check the run out on it, check the pistons, the cylinders, the clearance, you know, maybe it can just get freshened up, and, you know, this was the notorious spot my dad told me had a crack somewhere, but, I don't know, maybe I'll find something once we get going on it, but. That's a wrap. It's there. Until cool. next time. The way he explained it to me was when we were moving his house in Little Rock, he, he had a lot of stuff and he downsized, but he had, you know, the broken down cars, the trucks, the, you know, pallets of wood, you know, things where you're like, why do you have this? And then when you needed it, you go there because you knew he had it. But then there was, you know, some things where, you know, people would tell him, oh, you got to get rid of this stuff. You, you know, it's time. So one day we were in his garage and we were kind of clearing it out, you know, going through stuff, organizing and, and I found a picture of his old 45 uh, flathead that he had. And I th you know, it's almost like he had to tell somebody the way he felt about it. So he told me, you know, everybody makes fun of me and says, oh, you got all this junk, you know? And he says, but I grew up poor, you know, and, and we didn't have much. So when I get these tools that, you know, aren't the nicest looking, but they get the job done, you know, I gotta have five of them because I feel like I'm rich, you know? And just looking at the picture of the bike, you know, he was like, well, when I got that bike, it's like you getting a sports car, you getting, you know, it's, you feel like you have something, you know, and it's something he wanted that he finally got. So, you know, it kind of made sense, you know, and, and, and of course, like I said, once we needed a tool or, you know, that, that piece of wood, cause we're jacking up, you know, the engines on our cars to replace something, where do you get it from? You go to dad's house cause you know, he has it, you know, <laughs> yeah. and then he calls you out on it. <laughs> so.